welcome back to the Still in Love podcast. This is episode number seven, and we are talking about what today? What do you bring to the table? Okay, so this is a continuation. This is part two from last week, and let's get into it. All right, let's talk about what do you bring to the table. So I think last week was really, really good. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this week, I think it's going to be even better. All right, let's what go. do you bring to the table? What you bring to the table? First of all, uh, when we're talking about uh, what you bring to the table, I think it's important that as a man, you bring the table. Okay. Now, that's a that's a, a, a different perspective from yeah. a lot of what you hear on social media and just in conversations with yeah. people. Yep. That's that's different. You 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 bring the table. You bring the table, and, like and, and so now now let's talk about the table that you bring. Mm-hmm. What should you bring to that table? But mm-hmm. first of all, you bring the table. Mm-hmm. You you set the foundation, man. You 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 set it off. You're the leader, yeah. um, and you set it off. Adam was created first, mm-hmm. and God gave Adam the commission. You know, He gave him the charge, and then He created Eve from the rib of Adam. And as a help me, but, but Adam, you bring the table, man, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think, um, oftentimes guys come into a marriage and they looking for 50, 50 and mm-hmm. they looking for, you know, a woman to, 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 to bring some, some, you know, just as much as what they bring to the table mm-hmm. without really understanding that you bring the table mm-hmm. because responsible men of God understand that, Hey, listen, it's no table if I don't bring it, mm-hmm. you know, because if, if she got to bring the table, then uh, that table going to be rocky and not that she can't bring a table, but if I'm looking to be married to someone that's bringing the table and that's my right. mindset right. coming into it to where, mm-hmm. how much money she got, what's her credit score, mm-hmm. you know, how many degrees she has. Mm-hmm. You know, you going into a marriage like a, a little child, a little boy mentality, mm-hmm. rather than being a responsible young man and not thinking about what she can pres- uh, possess, what she possess financially. But, you know, some intangible things is what's important. So anyway, let's talk about it. Let's talk mm-hmm. about it. I bring the table. Right. You bring in the whole table. The whole table. Okay. So, so now, mm-hmm. now, now that I brought the table, what kind of table have I brought? <laughs> have mm-hmm. I brought you know mm-hmm. because I can bring a table that's that's regular mm-hmm. I can bring a table that's that's with a whole lot of issues on the table correct um a whole lot of con- childhood issues mm-hmm. a whole lot of um yeah uh baby mama issues mm-hmm. a whole lot of issues that 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 you don't really want to bring anybody to that table mm-hmm. and so um a whole lot of broke issues that mm-hmm. you bring to the table you know and so what, what 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 is it that a woman of god want their future husband to bring to the table mm-hmm. let's talk about it let's talk about it i think the first thing that's important to bring to the table if you're a man mm-hmm. the first and most important thing mm-hmm. as a kingdom man is to bring your relationship with the lord mm mm-hmm. mhm that's very important. Really knowing God, you got to know God. That's the first thing. That's number one. You can bring, you can bring money. You can, bring, one. you can bring a, you, you know, millions of dollars. But mm-hmm. if you don't, if you don't, if you don't know the Lord. Yes. You know, this is the foundation. Mm-hmm. The Word of God. Who are you? Who are you? Yeah. Do you build your foundation off of the Word of God, mm-hmm. or do you build your foundation off of uh, social media, or, or, or you know, your, your, your money, or you know, the things that you possess? Mm-hmm. Foundation. The mm-hmm. Word of God. Does he know the Lord? That's mm-hmm. the first thing. Mm-hmm. This is what I bring to the table. I know the Lord mm-hmm. and I understand because when I know the Lord and I really know him, then it means that he's my head mm-hmm. and 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 I love my wife, my future wife, like Christ loved the church. Mm-hmm. That's what that means. Mm-hmm. And so um, Christ died for the church and he gave himself for, for the church. Mm-hmm. And so that's what he understands. And so, ladies, if, if you're. Um, coming to a table or looking to come to a table, you make sure the first things are first. Not that he go to church. Correct. Not that he sing in the choir. Not Correct. that he sing on the worship team. Not that he's a preacher, but that he has a relationship with the Lord. Because well, how will I know that? How will I know that he has a relationship with the Lord? Because his fruit will show if he has a relationship with the Lord or not. Not fruit. How is he? How is he speaking? Mm, what's coming out of his what's mouth? What's coming out of his mouth? Is, uh-huh. it, is, it, is it words of, of profanity? Is it is it words that's demeaning? Mm. Um, you know, what's his lifestyle? <laughs> is he trying to sleep with you? Is he, you know, involved in, in, in premarital sex? You know, what does he do? What's, what's his habits? Do you see the fruit 
that the spirit of the living God lives on the inside of him. Don't ignore the fruit. Who living? Who's living on the inside? That's it. Jesus or the devil? Because <laughs> both of them going to bear fruit. Hello? That's it. Both of them going to bear fruit. And, and a lot of times people come to the table um, and they see a, a, a they see the fruit that's on the table uh-huh. and they ignore the fruit that's on the table. Yes, sir. Explain that self. You came to his table and you saw the fruit of fornication or the fruit of, <laughs> of lust, of, of lust or, or the fruit of, of, of anger uh-huh. on his table. Uh-huh. And you ignored anger. You ignored fornic- the fornication. You ignored how he spoke. You ignored his, um, lack of relationship with his children. You ignored the fruit that you saw. Mm-hmm. You saw fruit of irresponsibility, but you ignored that. And you felt that if you get with him and if you sleep with him and if you love him enough and if you care about him enough, you know, then you can, you can, you can get the best out of him. And then he'll bear somehow bear more fruit because of his connection with you. And so you ignore the fruit that you saw. Rather than paying attention to the fruit and understanding that you cannot change the type of fruit that he possess. Mm-hmm. It's his relationship with the Lord. Point blank period. All right. The next man. thing, <laughs> the next thing that's important that he, that he brings to the table as a man, what's mm-hmm. important. When we're talking about table, you bring the table. Mm-hmm. You, the foundation is the word of God. You set that foundation. It has mm-hmm. to be the word of God. He has to be your be all. Mm-hmm. Next thing that's important. This is not necessarily in the order. What this is the, the first thing is the Lord. That's correct. That's that that's priority. Mm-hmm. Next thing you want to bring to the table. Vision. Does he have vision? <laughs> Does he have vision? Do we know where he's going? This is where we are, but this is where we're going. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, we may not have a, a, a million right now. Mm-hmm. We may not have a billion right now. Mm-hmm. We may not be, you know, we may have to live in these apartments for a minute. Mm-hmm. We may be riding in this vehicle right now. Mm-hmm. This is where we are as it relates to our, our, our credit right now. Mm-hmm. But, but this is not where we're going to be. This is where we're going. Mm-hmm. We're going here. I have a vision. We're here, but we're not going to stay here. This is where we're going. Here is the mm-hmm. vision statement, and here is the vision. And make sure that he have a vision. Now, how do I know as a single woman that a man has vision? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What is he talking about? But see, here's the thing, Pastor. Okay. Guys or some guys are plentiful on words. Okay. They're plentiful. There are some brothers who, yeah, I know where I'm going. I'm going to have this. I'm going to, you know, own, I'm, you know, I'm going to have me 15 rental properties. I'm going to, I'm going to open up me a restaurant. I'm going to, I'm going to do good. all of these things. And so to me, that sounds like, well, not to me, but maybe to other sisters, that sounds like vision. That's a daydream. It's a difference in a dream, in a vision, in a daydream. But I understand the question that you're asking. Correct. Because sometimes I don't know how to decipher. I can't, I can't tell. I have a, a theory or a thought in my mind. Um, but he sounds like, you know, he got his stuff together, yeah. that he's on point. I think you have to look at his track record. See, that's that's where yeah. I wanted to go with that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You have to look at his track record. Yes. And, and though he may be a young guy, so he yeah. hadn't had a lot of experiences. Uh-huh. So he may be a 22-year-old man. Mm-hmm. And so, he still you know, got a track record. Yeah, but he has a track record. Absolutely. Did he did he go to school? Did he finish school? And even if he didn't go to school or right. finish school, what's his track record? Did he did he work a job? Was he, was he consistent at a job? Mm-hmm. Did he reach some of the goals that he said that there he wanted to reach? Yes, sir. You know, and so you have to look at that. Yes, did he sir. win in areas that he pursued was he victorious in those areas yes and oftentimes the track record can can help you to determine you know uh, or, or to a certain degree possibly mm-hmm. yeah. you know the future you know mm-hmm. to a certain degree mm-hmm. and uh and so you don't want to look at you, you don't want to see it someone who has a track record of of he's always being let go he's always you know um being in trouble he's always always in jail he's out and now he has a vision mm-hmm. you know um well let me see some of that independent of me right and don't you know 
if he's communicating, you know, once we connect, then this is going to happen. Now, mm -hmm. this is what I brought to the table prior to you coming. Correct. So, so you have to understand that what did he bring to the table prior to me coming to the mm -hmm. table, to his table? Because mm -hmm. he brought a table. Yep. And I need to pay a good, I need to pay attention. Mm-hmm. To his table. Yep. So looking at his track record. Yeah. And so oftentimes his track record. Now I can trust his vision because mm -hmm. of things that he's done before. Mm -hmm. But I can't trust his vision if he said that he wanted to be a barber and he didn't. He's not a barber. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go to, you know, auto mechanic. You know, so he, he didn't finish that. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go to college. He didn't finish that. Well, I don't trust your track record. So mm -hmm. now I think that your vision is just a daydream. Mm -hmm. You know, so you want to look at his track record. Mm -hmm. And I think it's okay to be honest. Yeah. With what you're looking at, you know, um, I think sometimes we just we want absolutes with people. We want to know whether or not we can fully, fully trust in what they're saying or not. Um, and sometimes I think you just kind of you do have to look at the fruit. You have to look at the track record and and Lord, show me and don't let me be blind um, don't let me lean into my own understanding because for some of us as women, it might be easier for us to tackle some of those things like, yeah, I went to school. Yeah, I did this. Yeah, I did that. And he may not be there. Um, but Lord, give me wisdom and help me to see beyond sometimes the tangibles, you know, help me to see what's really there. Um, and I just wanted to put yeah, that out that's there. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. So he also need to have. Uh oh. Some I'm money. Change. <laughs> All right. So you need to have money, right? Okay. What you think? Does he have to have a lot of money, or does or or can I have a little money? I think a lot of money is gravy. <laughs> but 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 he has to have some money. Mm -hmm. Um. Now here's the thing: when he has vision. Mm -hmm. the money is coming if he know the lord he has vision mm -hmm. then the money will come mm -hmm. um but i think it's important that he comes to the table with something we're talking about being married mm -hmm. you coming with something mm -hmm. you don't have to come with 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 four hundred thousand dollars in the bank correct but but you got you got you, you got some right we, mm -hmm. we're gonna have some you know you, you got you, you come with some in the mm -hmm. bank right you know so i think it's important mm -hmm. that he has you know some kind of change or mm -hmm. he's working and he's pursuing it because if he's if he's in his you know early 20s mm -hmm. you know, he, he may not you know he's probably not gonna have a lot of money you right. know uh, he may not have a lot of money you know mm -hmm. but i think that's important you know and just as you get further you want to know you know mm -hmm. what, what, what what you're working with mm -hmm. who am i connecting with what am yeah. i connecting with yeah. you know what's your track record with your finances mm -hmm. hey he's 45 mm -hmm. we getting married and he still ain't got no money mm -hmm. you know you ain't got to be rich but you got you got to have something mm -hmm. you got to have some some resources mm -hmm. what's your What's your thoughts on that? I, the same. Um, how well are you managing what you have? That's like right. Like you said, That's if good. you have the um, the vision, even if you are minimum wage, mm -hmm. it is, and you have work ethic, and you have good money management. Listen, we're gonna manage that minimum That's right. wage. That's right. Um, and you and 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 of course, these are laws that the Lord put into the earth about seed and harvest. But if you stay consistent with that and there is vision and okay, you don't want to stay here. I want to move to something else, something greater. I know that you will manage that well Absolutely. as we continue to grow. So yeah, I don't, I don't think, and I think it's, you have to know what you consider a lot in a little, mm -hmm. because if for some people, um, I I want a millionaire. He got he got to come in <laughs> at the seven figures. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got to he's got to already be there. Um, and if that's if that's what if if that's your personal preference, then that's your personal preference. Um, I think just for regular women, um, uh, and I'm not. It's it's not even to say that those women aren't regular. I think for most women, yeah. um, being a millionaire is not a requirement. I think really what women want to see is that you manage well. You manage what you have well. Um, and, I, and I think that's it. I think if there are any income level preferences, I think those are things that you have to know within yourself. And those are conversations that you have to have with the person that you are potentially in a relationship with. Because if 
if he has all of these, he's a man of God, he has vision, but the income is low and that's a, that's a no, no for you. Then you have to be honest about, Hey, I, I, that's just not my preference. If you are used to living a certain lifestyle, um, then you have to know then maybe what you currently have is not enough for me to, to stay in what I'm comfortable with. Um, and I think in time that's, that's worthy of a conversation, but I don't think you turn a brother away because if he has the other two things, Mm. it's only a matter of time uh, before the money comes. And by money, I think money is just one of those conversations that we have sometimes that we don't really talk about the full scope of because it comes down to again my personal preferences and what I deem as enough what I deem as enough I know as a single person where I am going and where I would like to go and where I would like to be headed and where my final destination may be career wise or income wise I may be trying to get to a certain uh, number in my mind. Oh, this would be comfortable for me. I think most people would just want to be comfortable. Yep. I just want to be in a place where I'm not in a place of struggle. Yep. That's it. I'm not asking for a millionaire or a billionaire. I am asking just for a place of comfort where, Hey, I know that it, it I, I have to pay bills in order to live. Um, but I think you being on the same page, um, but that comes, I think, in time. Yeah. What a man brings to the table is yeah. if he got the vision and if he's managing his own well, yeah. hey. I think that's really good. Consider that, sis. Yeah, yeah. Looking at, I mean, I think you, you said it. You mm-hmm. summed it up to where is he a good money manager, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and if he manages the little well, he'll yep. manage this. If he manages the little well, he'll yes. manage a lot well, Absolutely. you know. So if you're faithful over a few, is he yep. faithful over the few? Yes. And if he's faithful over the few, yes. then he'll be a ruler over the many, you know. So, all right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What I get back here. 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 Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> there we go. His. EQ, his mm-hmm. intelligence, his e- mm-hmm. emotional intelligence. Where is he emotionally? Where is his EQ, his IQ and EQ? Where is he emotionally? You, you, wanna, he, you want someone because he can have all the money in the world, he can have all the vision, but if he has a low EQ, a very low EQ, then yeah, yeah, he, he's going to run circles around you. Not just run circles around you, he's not going to be intelligent, emotionally because so that means you, you want to know his childhood and you can have a rough he can have a rough childhood mm-hmm. but did he get healing from his rough childhood he could have experienced trauma abuse molestation mm-hmm. but has he received the counseling has he gotten the healing from the law that he needed from his rough abusive molested childhood Mm -hmm. and those things are important because those things help determine your eq Mm -hmm. so where is he as it relates to his emotional intelligence Mm -hmm. that is important because sometimes you come to the table and it's oh he got money oh he go to church oh he got vision but but he he got you know his his esteem is low he don't his 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 temper is quick Mm -hmm. um doesn't know how to manage. He don't know how to manage his emotions. He he he, he fights. He get he, he clicks. He has a um, what do you call that? He, when he, he he's a um, a hot head. A hot head. He yes. <laughs> he clicking on everybody. Yes. Uh, anger management. Yes. He, he don't know how to manage his anger. Yes. And so because it's he doesn't have conflict resolution skills. Mm-hmm. And so it's you know when conflict happens he doesn't know how to to to, to handle it. Mm-hmm. He don't know how to resolve it. Mm-hmm. He it results into a fight. On to him cussing somebody out mm-hmm. or him Worse. going off, yeah. you know, um, or fighting abuse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's very important mm-hmm. because he fine, he look good, mm-hmm. he cute, he dress nice. But how is his emotional intelligence? Yes. I can't say enough about brothers coming to the table with a high, even mid to high EQ. When you don't have that, you bring chaos and instability. (laughs) And I see so many 
women who they're coming they they are bringing some great things to the table but they will still sit at the table with a man who does not have a high EQ and they end up paying for it in their lives because you don't have the ability to regulate your emotions some way, somehow you lash out at me or I am on the receiving end of that. When you cannot even identify your emotions, unsure of what you feel, unsure how to communicate how you feel um, or how to get yourself to a place of peace. It is impossible for you to give me what you do not have or what you do not even have an understanding that you don't have. Um, so I, I, my heart breaks, honestly, because you see it in young boys. When when you see boys playing when they are nine and ten and they don't have the ability to regulate emotions, you know that this is without some measure of intervention. We are setting him up for trouble because you he's not going to be 10 forever. He's going to grow up and he's going to be 21. and He's going to be a 30 year old that doesn't understand um, how to be present even with his emotions, whatever they may be. And and what do I do with them when I do feel them? Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, I hear people say it all the time. Um, psychologists, therapists, just talking about prisons are full of people, yeah. men who did not have the ability to understand, identify, and even regulate their own emotions. And um, it's, it's just very unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. And so if if you are a man and you are single and you know that at some point in your life you want to marry, I would strongly encourage you to um, get the help that you need to learn about your emotions, how to manage them. Reg- when you learn to manage them, you learn to regulate them. Yeah. But just learning that God has given us emotions um, and how to how to how to live with the emotions that you've been given yeah. and to grow in that. That's a skill. Yeah. That's a skill. You have to learn to do that. So, it's so um, my heart, my heart breaks sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's so important. And I think I think what what the things that we talking about in terms of bringing to the table, it's important. And it's not because some people get some people get it twisted and they think that they're bringing something to the table for someone else. Oh my Lord. You're not, you're not bringing this to the table necessarily for someone else. You're bringing this to the table because this is who you are for yourself. Yeah. This is, this is who, if, if, you, if you never get married, Correct. you should have a relationship with God. If you never get married, what is your vision for your life? If you never get married, aren't you, you know, looking to have some resource to support your vision? If you never get married, aren't you working on you and your emotional stability? <sighs> And so uh, oftentimes people are, are working on themselves for somebody else and that really never, you know, that doesn't work. You work on yourself for you. You work on being a better you. And when you are, are, are better you, you are able to present this table. And whoever comes to the table going to be blessed because of what's, what's on this table. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You can go to uh, uh, another city mm-hmm. and bless that city mm-hmm. because when you went to that other city, when you go to the other city, you've taken that table with you. Correct. You can go to I'm another job. Me. Absolutely. And when you go to another job, mm-hmm. that job is going to be blessed because mm-hmm. you're taking the table with you. Mm-hmm. The table goes everywhere yes. that you go. Yeah. And so you're going somewhere with, with vision. You're going somewhere yeah. with, with high EQ skills. You're going somewhere with the word of God, mm-hmm. a, a relationship with the Lord. You're going somewhere with, with some change in your pocket. Mm-hmm. You're going somewhere with a level of security. Mm-hmm. These things are important. Absolutely. So um, Vital. So so it's important what you so work on. Adding value to yourself. Yes. Not for someone else, no. but you add it to yourself because you care about you. Yes. And when you get individuals that really care about themselves, they yes. add value to themselves. Yes. And the more value you add to yourself, the more value you add to anything that connects with you. Absolutely. All right. What else you get? You got a lot of keys. <laughs> you got a lot of keys. And what is that representing? It represents a home. Okay. A home. It mm-hmm. gotta be a house. A mm-hmm. House is great. Mm-hmm. Don't you have an apartment, a duplex, or something? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, aren't you? What, what are you bringing to the table? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, you don't have to have a. Uh, I mean, when we, before we get like before we even say I do, mm-hmm. where we where we gonna live? Mm-hmm. Where we where we going where we going? Mm-hmm. You know, 
you know, or maybe you stack in your money, mm-hmm. you know, while you're living with your, 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 Mom, your parents, dad, whoever, yeah. you know, you, you, you're stacking your money, but yeah. that vision in that vision, it's a home is in that vision mm-hmm. and a home is in that vision with or without your spouse correct or your potential spouse correct that home and you have resources available to do it now some people just hey listen because i'm in this situation i'm, I'm helping my parents out mm-hmm. but but i i am able yep to purchase a home but i choose to be in this situation to stack mm-hmm. my money to be in a better position mm-hmm. but i think having a home is important as we talk about bringing something to the table i agree i think if he is in a place to purchase a home uh for sure, absolutely do that. Um, but I think it goes back to what you said. I am adding value to myself. And even if I may not be in my home presently, I am stacking my money to be able to. I, yeah. That is a part of something down the line, be it six months, a year, six years. I have plans, too, because that's a part of the vision for myself. So, um, yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. Let me see what we got in here. What's in your wallet? Oh. A credit card. Credit card. Uh huh. This represents <laughs> the credit card represent uh, your credit score. Oh. What is the credit? Now you're score? meddling. Now what, you're meddling. What, what, what you come, man? You 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 come. You got a vision, but you got a you got a five hundred credit score. Now it may be circumstances that have caused you to have this five hundred credit score, but that vision is gone communicate a lot where's the vision hey look it's 500 now but in six months because i'm in this credit recovery program mm-hmm. and in six months it's gonna go up to 600 mm-hmm. or 650 you know and, and then it's gonna move to 700 mm-hmm. 750 but it's important what is your credit score mm-hmm. because you want her to come to a table mm-hmm. and you have a 500 credit score mm-hmm. i and- don't believe in credit <laughs> so i don't have to work on my credit. <laughs> So that's that's him with that with that with that low EQ. He don't believe in credit because there are some. I don't believe in credit. So working on your credit score. This is what I come to the table with. Mm-hmm. This is what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. I've been single and I've been working on my relationship with the Lord. I've been working on my childhood trauma. Mm-hmm. I've been working on my vision because I wrote the vision and made it plain. And now I'm pursuing my vision. Mm-hmm. I've been working on getting my coins together. Mm-hmm. I've been working on my credit score so mm-hmm. I can have a nice home mm-hmm. and not paying a, 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 a high interest. I'm working on my credit score. I'm mm-hmm. working on getting me a, a, a place to live in. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm adding value to myself. Mm-hmm. So I have a nice table so that when God, if God decides to connect me with somebody, I got something I'm bringing to the table. Absolutely. Something valuable. Absolutely. And so here it is. This is an intangible that you bring to the table, your relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because in that comes integrity. Yes. Which is everything. Yes. In that comes discipline. Come on. In that comes character. Come on. So I'm working on my character, my my discipline, my integrity when I have a relationship with the Lord. Enough said. Enough said. What else I'm bringing to the table? Enough said. Your phone? No, not my phone. Communication. (laughs) Communication. Is he a good communicator? Are you working on your communication skills? Uh, That was a text from my daughter. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you working on your communication skills? Mm Mm-hmm. Can he communicate? We talked before about this to where, you know, he may not be a great communicator, but he need to have communication skills and know how to communicate. Well, he does need to be a decent communicator. (laughs) He ain't got to be great, but he got to be decent. The basic skills have to be there. Um, Again, (laughs) to me, it goes back. I feel the same way about um, the... EQ. It is disheartening to me as a woman when I hear brothers or I see brothers who struggle with communicating. Um, and, and it, you know, and I, I see it for what it is. Communication is a skill. And if most of us are honest, we did not take communication class <laughs> in school. We took it when we, if you went off to college, we took it in, in college. Um, and that was mostly just teaching you how to get up in front of your class to do an oral presentation. But it was not 
uh, about mastering the skill of communicating, saying what you're thinking, communicating, um, even with small things. And I think, you know, for most men, uh, they just weren't in an environment where that was encouraged and or taught. Um, I have to even now with our son, I have to slow him down sometimes and I have to say, hey, communicate. What is it that you're trying to say? Uh, you're crying, but OK, wipe your face and communicate. What are you feeling? How did that make you feel? Because I want that to be a place of comfort for you, because that is a skill that you learn. You don't wake up learning to be an effective or a good communicator. You have to learn that. And people think even for those who like people who talk a lot, like, oh, well, I'm a good communicator because I talk a lot. No, communicating is uh, being a good communicator is communicating in a way to where who you are communicating to understands what you're saying. Um, and that requires a certain level of skill. Yes. Um, and so, and it just requires practice. And unfortunately we have, there are a lot of brothers and yes, I know there are sisters too, but there are brothers who they've not had a lot of practice in learning to communicate, yeah. um, getting it right, getting it wrong. That's a part of the practice of learning to communicate. Sometimes getting it wrong, like, Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Let me try it a different way. Uh, or just expressing, talking, you know, um, and I, I just, again, it's so disheartening because I just, you see it so often, yep. more than I would care to see it. Yep. And you have some people chasing the bag and rather than chasing the bag. Uh-uh, don't say it. <laughs> don't say it. Rather than chasing the bag, mm -hmm. you know, seek after communication skills. You better know, in your communication. You know what would what I think I, I and I and I know you know people have such a love hate with social media. I certainly do. I, it's more of a hate than it is a love. But I would really love if some things were normalized on social media. I saw this young man. He was he came up on my feed. Um, the only social media I do is TikTok, um, and it's really for the laughs. Um, but this this particular young man, he was learning to read as an adult. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so beautiful to see because he was vulnerable enough to say that here I am an adult well into his 20s and I don't know how to read. And there were people that was reaching out to him and saying, hey, we will be glad to help you. Hey, click here. I'll link up with you. I'll help you out. So on and so forth. And I know that there are other brothers just like that. But along with reading comes communication. And and I think that sometimes where there are gaps, us normalizing, filling in the gaps. If you are not a good communicator, go to a class. Well, where's the, where are those classes? But the, the point I'm making is I would love for us to normalize fixing our weaknesses as opposed to covering them up with other things because there are a multitude of people who are great business people, great business men, great business women, but we are poor communicators don't communicate well. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I wish there was more space and room for us to not fake it. Like we had it together and really say, Hey, yeah, I'm excellent over here, but right here in this area, I could stand to do better and not just admit that I want to do better, but this is what I did to improve yeah. myself um, because the reality is it's a skill. It's not something that you are born with. And it, I, you know, it's just, Hey, we have to learn how to do some things. And when you see children learning to walk, you don't ridicule them. You don't <laughs> laugh at them and say, look at them trying to learn how to walk. You encourage them. Come on. Yay. Come on. Walk towards me. Walk towards me. There's some encouraging there, encouragement there. So I just, you know, again, it's just one of those things. I wish we could normalize. Hey, I am weak in this area. Yeah. Yep. And I guarantee you there will be individuals in your life who will be doing the same thing. I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad that you are working on that skill. You are working on that in your life because it's going to make you a better man. It's going to make you a better man. You are going to exist with people around you better when you learn to communicate. So rather than chase the bag, uh -huh. learn how to communicate. Come on. Because when you learn how to communicate mm -hmm. and you communicate well, mm -hmm. the bag will come. 
All right. Amen. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are just some of the things that I think that's important mm-hmm. that, that we bring to the table as men, as mm-hmm. men of God. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we, we, we talk about being a better me. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a part of being a better, mm-hmm. a better me, mm-hmm. working on my relationship with the, with the Lord, mm-hmm. working on my vision, working on the home, working on my credit score, mm-hmm. working on my, my job, my, mm-hmm. my skill to bring in resources, working on my communication skills mm-hmm. and working on my EQ mm-hmm. and investing in it. Mm-hmm. Investing time in that and getting mm-hmm. better in those areas, those tangible yet intangible areas as well. Mm-hmm. And when you bring that to the table, mm-hmm. you bringing something, something serious. You bringing a unicorn to the table. And, and mm-hmm. the, the blessing to me is that I know brothers that bring mm-hmm. all seven of these things to yeah. the table. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, and and these brothers are, are really unicorns because mm-hmm. you know they they serious about their relationship with the Lord. And they they they've worked and they continuously work. Mm-hmm. On these other areas of their lives, and so um, I think that's 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 key, mm-hmm. you know, for any brother that's out there that's listening. Mm-hmm. This is this is key mm-hmm. for you to strive to to bring these to the table. Mm-hmm. Listen, we got to stop. We got to okay. stop right now. Right. Um, it's got to be a part three. I don't Sounds know if we good. ever had a part three. This no. is some good stuff. <laughs> this is some good stuff. So we gotta have a part three. So okay. make sure you come back um, and tune in for part three. Sounds like a plan. All right, y'all. Don't just start in love, but stay in love. Bye, y'all. God bless. Thank you for listening to the Still in Love podcast. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode and it has indeed blessed your life. If it has, we need you to do three things for us. One, we want you to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite platform so that way you can be notified when a new episode drops. Number two, we want you to review it. Click on that five star and let us know how much you enjoyed it. We absolutely love feedback here at the Still in Love podcast. And this helps us to make sure that we are scratching where there's an itch. And number three, we want you to share it with a friend or family member. Also, if you have a question, we'd love to hear it and even talk about it right here on the podcast. You can submit those questions at stillinlovepodcast.com. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Innovation Church Memphis and on TikTok at We Are Innovation. Until next time, peace. Don't just start in love, but stay in love. Thanks for tuning in to Still in Love Podcast.